The market in Baghdad's Tehran Square was packed with people, making the most of a sunny winter's day. We were there by the stands. One man came, fell to the ground, started complaining, my stomach is hurting, and he pressed the detonator in his hand. It exploded immediately. People were torn to pieces. A lot of people died and were injured. The Interior Ministry says that as more people flocked around the victims, the second bomb went off. It's the deadliest attack in central Baghdad since January 2018. It also happened in Tehran Square. Similar bombings were commonplace in the capital in the early 2000s, after the US-led invasion, and later as ISIL's influence grew across the country. This part of the city became a fortress, surrounded by concrete blast walls and checkpoints. But after the government declared ISIL defeated in 2017, such attacks became rare and the extra security was removed. The blasts come just a week after the US confirmed it had cut its troop levels in Iraq to just 2,500, their lowest levels in nearly two decades. But just this week, Iraq sent extra soldiers to its border with Syria, where ISIL still has a presence, and to Tuz Khramatu, about 180 kilometres north of Baghdad. ISIL's been trying to regroup and recover, but it's not been able to pull off any major attacks, resorting mainly to guerrilla-style warfare against the Iraqi army and paramilitaries, many of whom are backed by Iran. Just a few blocks from Tehran is Tahrir Square, the centre of more than a year of anti-government protests, demanding better security, more opportunities and less foreign interference. The protesters also want elections, which have been postponed to October. Analysts say several groups could benefit from Thursday's bombings. We've witnessed uh, a, a continuous and a very prominent rhetoric from a lot of uh, politicians and a lot, a lot of militia leaders that were uh, protecting the government or that were defending and supporting the regime against the, civil, against the, the peaceful protests for uh, go governmental reforms in Iraq that have continuously warned Iraqis in one way or another indirectly intimidated the protest movement that anti-governmental protests will only lead to escalations that would remind us to the ISIS days. Soon after Thursday's attack, much of the evidence had been cleared away and life was getting back to normal. Iraqis are resilient after so many years of conflict and unrest. Alexia O'Brien, Al Jazeera. Let's hear now from our correspondent, Simona Fulton, who's been following events in Baghdad. We're here at the site of the incident in Baghdad's central Tehran Square. This is the market where the bombs went uh, off earlier on Thursday. Uh, on the floor, we can see uh, burned pieces of clothing. There is also quite a bit of blood that is still spilled, which we're not uh, showing you because it may be uh, too graphic. And people here are still very much in shock. They cannot believe that such incidents could once again return to Baghdad, which has been uh, relatively stable and uh, peaceful uh, since 2017, uh, since uh, ISIL was officially defeated. Now, many believe, although there is no official claim of responsibility yet, is that this attack bears the hallmarks of ISIL. What appears to have happened is that uh, the first suicide bomber feigned sickness uh, to attract uh, people towards him to help him. And after the first bomb, went off and people gathered uh, to help the wounded. That's when the second uh, suicide bomber uh, hit. Now, you can see right now that many of the shops here are uh, closed. Security forces have uh, told people to stay home, to disperse uh, in case uh, there would be further attacks. But normally, this area would be extremely busy. It would be bustling uh, with uh, people uh, doing their shopping uh, at this time uh, of the day. And, uh, and many people that uh, I've spoken to, they are very fearful that this incident could perhaps mark the return of such suicide bombings to Baghdad the return of instability. It's only been a few years since life has really returned uh, to normal in the capital, with people once again going about their uh, daily lives without having to worry about uh, explosion. We've seen concrete walls that surrounded buildings to protect them for, from such blasts come down again, uh, revealing really the city and, uh, and some of its uh, architectural heritage. So there, there is quite a lot of shock, there is quite a lot of fear about what this incident means for the broader stability of the city. But of course, we have to wait and see what the investigations will reveal. And we have to still wait for the official claim of responsibility. 
Yeah, so let's speak now to Ahmed Rushdie, who's the director of the House of Iraqi Expertise Foundation and joins us live by Skype from Baghdad. Ahmed Rushdie, welcome to the program. Uh, this is all tragically reminiscent of days gone by, isn't it? Um, the last attack of this kind uh, back in June 2019. So given that, are you surprised by this? Well, actually, what's happened today is one of the massacres that Baghdad didn't see for a long time, starting from 2017. And what's happened today shows us is that we don't only have an economical, political problem, but it looks like that we have a security problem. That there is, this is what happened today is actually a, a major security breach, and uh, uh, the, 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 the responsible uh, uh, officials should should do something about it because. If those two actually infiltrate into a crowded market, that means maybe there are others can be presented anywhere in Baghdad, especially in the crowded areas. So you can imagine how much what's happened today was very, uh, very surprised for Iraqis, and it was a sign, a very bad sign about the next days. Aren't these kind of attacks, though, incredibly hard to stop? Well, it's supposed to be that we have a major security plan about securing Baghdad, and it's supposed to be successful in a way that Baghdad, before uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the security plan was blocked, uh, was uh, uh, separated into areas, was there were, there were so many checkpoints in Baghdad, and all of those things actually vanished because it's supposed to be that we, are, we defeated the ISIS eventually. But the problem now we are reaching in a way that, no, we didn't defeat Daesh. We need to make more efforts on intelligent basis uh, in a way to know exactly what's happening and to know exactly what ISIS is actually planning in the next days about reaching to Baghdad. What do you make of the timing of this? Uh, several things, really. Uh, day two of the Biden presidency, just five or six days since yes. the, the announcement of the troop drawdown and uh, the fact that there will be early elections to be held in Iraq. Uh, how, how does all this fit into it? Just as I said in the beginning, it's a very bad message because it shows you that, OK, um, uh, uh, we the, the, actually, the government postponed the elections until uh, October. It's supposed to be on June, but it shows you that it, it, we need to change the system in a way or another. We need to bring new uh, uh, officials uh, into the government, uh, bring new ideas about how to deal with the situation in Iraq, especially, especially, which is a very important issue that we have an economical crisis, which show you that poverty can be rising up, which eventually it will help ISIS to recruit more men and women. So you can imagine how much we are in trouble, in real trouble. And that's why I think uh, postponing the elections, um, well, uh, the, the, the international issue, or let's say the conflict between Iran and the U.S., maybe has some sort of a, uh, uh, some sort of a relationship. But uh, I think the most important thing is that we're going to focus, it's supposed to be the Iraqi government, focus on the local issues. Uh, focus on how to deal with the security situation in Baghdad and how to have more and more uh, 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 influential security plan to save people, especially in okay. the capital, that any attacks before a long time. Abed Rushdi, great to get your expertise on this. I so do appreciate that. Thanks very much indeed. You're most welcome. You're most welcome.